by the Michigan Head and Neck Institute in Warren with your host, John McCullough. The Michigan Head and Neck Institute exclusively treats TMJ and obstructive sleep apnea for thousands of patients every year. Now, here's John McCullough with Dr. Richard Klein. And good Thursday evening, everyone, and welcome to another adventure into another medium here on Facebook Live with getting out of the pain lane, and I guess we've got a bit of a name change here in the program this evening, so we're going to let Dr. Klein take that, take care of that. But I want to uh, welcome all of you, and uh, thank you for joining us this evening. We're going to be talking about uh, the things that Dr. Klein normally talks about, and we're going to be talking about some new things to this show, and uh, we're really looking forward to that. So with that, I'm going to introduce Dr. Klein and uh, at Michigan Head and Neck Institute and let you introduce uh, special guest, which was your idea, and uh, you're going to take credit for it. I'm going to see that you get it. And I hope everybody listening uh, loves what we did here. I hope they do, uh, too. Good to see you again, John. Good seeing you. Uh, we've been doing Getting Out of the Pain Lane for quite a few years. So today only, just for tonight, this is going to be called Have the Right Gear for Your Ear. So we're going to be talking about ear problems, and I've asked Joshua Cruz and Felix Cruz to come. And Felix got a little busy, um, has to go to a seminar, so he's put it in the well-versed hands of his son, and that's who I'm introducing here. And Joshua, welcome. I'm glad to have you. Thank you, John, and thank you, Dr. Klein, for having me as a guest. Certainly looking forward to it and uh, appreciative of the opportunity. Yeah, and uh, now for information so the folks know what we're talking about here, uh, Felix Cruz uh, is in the uh, Farmington Hills office of Cruz Hearing. And if you drive south on Telegraph and uh, get down into Taylor, you'll, uh, before too long, you'll run into Cruz Hearing again. That's correct, John. And we do have the two clinical locations, Farmington Hills, where my father is at, and Taylor, where, where I am at. And at Cruz Hearing, we are just a small family-owned uh, business that Felix founded over 25 years ago. So we've been helping Metro Detroit here better for almost three decades now. And one of the things that I've loved about doing business with you is that that's exactly what you do. You stay small. It's a family operation. Everybody in there is family, it seems. Correct. And uh, it's a great place to go where you don't feel conspicuous. Because, because I never forget what your dad told me. First time I walked in, I had never met him. And we shook hands and he took me into his office. And before we sat down, he says, did you look at around that waiting room? And I said, well, not really. I get funny feeling when you're in a full waiting room and you start looking at people. He says, come here, just look. And we walked back out and looked and walked back in. He says, you have never seen that many people in one room who didn't want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sat down and explained it to me. And uh, that was uh, the start of our relationship. But um, let's do as we do. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll keep it kind of the way we normally do. And normally the first question I ask you, anything new <laughs> in the world of TMJ and sleep apnea since we last talked? Well, what's new is the way we're doing this program right now. Um, I have heard you talk about the, the Cruz family for many years. And I thought, well, one of the problems with TMJ is ear. There's a lot of different problems that with, uh, we talk about and we've answered questions about ear congestion, hearing loss, ringing of the ear, buzzing of the ear, dizziness, all of, all of those things. And so I thought, well, let's make one show all about the ear. And that's what today is about. So that's what's new. It's not new in publication, but uh, we treat it differently. Um, the Cruz family, has, and you know, I followed your advice and we went out to dinner and they are the nicest guys. They really are. Um, I didn't know if that was just uh, advertising BS over the, all the years, but you were right. They are nice guys, and they're let me, honest. Let me just stop you for a moment. No, man. I've known you long enough. You don't BS on the radio. I know that. I do BS on the radio. Don't get me wrong. Never about advertisers. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. So I, I was happy to meet them and found out that they, they really do know a lot about what they're doing. And when I treat ear problems, it's a totally different causality. So let's talk about both of them. That's why we're here. Okay, well, we're looking forward to it. And, um, uh, you know, I know from, uh, I don't even remember how many years Cindy should be in here because she knows <laughs> the date the first right. time I, I talked to you folks. But um, is she the one who said, go get your ears checked? 
Uh, she didn't say it exactly that Not way. Because I get, uh, I get she, that from women go up to the husbands. My husband snores. Go in there. Go in there. And I, I joke. I, I've made w more women happy in the in the city of Warren than any other man because I stopped their snoring. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing about hearing aids that uh, and hearing instruments that uh, that I didn't know um, is the answer to this question: uh, Can hearing aids really help hearing loss? Is that possible? Absolutely. And the first thing I want to touch on is the term hearing loss. And we hear that so often. To me, it's a bit misleading because when we hear the term hearing loss, it's almost as if we can't hear the sound or we're just missing things. When the issues with the hearing begin, it's not necessarily that we can't hear the sounds. We're, we've lost the understanding. We've lost the clarity and the sharpness. So when we're in a restaurant, when we're in an environment with a little bit of background noise, we hear the waitress. We know that she's saying something, but we've lost that edge. We've lost that sharpness. There's no more clarity. And what today's hearing aids can do certainly is to help filter out and reduce a lot of that mumbo jumbo, a lot of that background noise. Now, there's no perfect hearing aid out there, but we're able to much better improve that sharpness, improve that clarity. Understanding is the key and critical thing. And when our grandchildren are speaking to us, again, we hear their voices, but sometimes we just do what I call the smile and nod. We have no idea what they're saying, but we just smile and nod in approval. What hearing devices now can do is, again, bring back that sharpness, bring back that clarity, because it is all about understanding. I'm getting the feeling, and maybe it's just people are being nice to me, uh, which is rare, but because of what I do. Um, but the, I'm getting the feeling that there is less of that stigma attached to it than there, than there ever has been in the past, that people say, oh, You've, you've got hearing instruments, or you've got hearing aids, or you've had your hearing corrected. Uh, how's it working? What's it not? Oh, geez, I'd never do that. Or, um, I'm, I'm not that old. I'm, I'm not going to be doing that yet. It's changing, isn't it? It certainly is. And there has been that negative stigma for a long, long time. For years, if you can't see too well, well, put your glasses on. That's okay. But if you're wearing a hearing aid, my goodness, what is wrong with you? But no, technology is certainly changing, and it's uh, much more a modern device now. People are more, con they're more concerned with their ability to hear than what it looks like. And today's devices, they're not invisible, but they hide really, really well, extremely cosmetically appealing, and that stigma is going away now. And that's good to see over here. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be careful. Um, and I, I think that uh, goes in further than just the ear. Uh, I think there's been a lot of changes in how we look at ourselves and how we take care of ourselves. More people are going to see regularly see their physician than a couple of generations ago. I know my grandparents never went to the doctor. They didn't believe in it. Oh, I'll, I'll go there if something happens to me. That stigma was there. I'll go to a doctor because there's something wrong with me. Now we know that if there's something wrong, we want to get it checked first and take care of it. So I think it applies to the ear and applies to TMD. And I think that applies to people that are getting um, breast cancer checkups. Lots of reasons. And it's good. I don't like the way some of the changes have happened over the past uh, three decades. But that is a good one. And so if you're getting more patients because they want to get their ears checked, nothing wrong with that. And the stigma is disappearing, just like you said. We're talking with Dr. Richard Klein of the Michigan Head and Neck Institute and Joshua Cruz, uh, part of the uh, Cruz family of uh, hearing correction people. Uh, Cruz Hearing, two offices, one in Farmington Hills and the other in Taylor, down river. And um, what I thought I'd do, I, I get emails, I get uh, letters, and so does uh, Felix. Pardon me. <laughs> so does Dr. Klein. And what we do when we have a special program is just fold those in as we go along. And if you hear something in one of those questions that you feel you need to respond to, just interrupt. It's all, you know, we're just having a conversation and we got some eavesdroppers out there. <laughs> but I will remind those eavesdroppers that we are live on Facebook Live, hence the title Facebook Live. And we are taking calls at our regular WDTK number, 800-923-9385. It's 800-923-WDTK. That'll pop right in here to the studio, and uh, you can ask a question of either Felix Cruz 
or uh, Dr. Richard Klein. Um, what does it mean, Dr. Klein, if you got both eye pain and ear pain at the same time? Is that a special kind of thing that gives you a signal, I got to go here? I see this with my TMJ patients. And the reason is when you have a TMJ problem, the muscles are being told by your brain to guard. If you, here's an example, you get a little stiff neck, you can't turn your head, and then a week later you can turn it. Why? Because the brain tells the muscle, guard, so you can't move much. And then whatever was there, the little tweak that you had playing sports, it, it heals, and then you could turn your head. With TMJ problems, there's a lot of muscles in the face, the head, and the neck. And when those muscles get tight, they can pull on structures in and around the eye and in and around the ear. There is a muscle called the sphenomandibularis that attaches to the mandible, which is the second half of the name, sphenomandibularis. The other half, the sphenoid bone, is behind your eye. So if that muscle gets tight, it shortens and it pulls on the bone behind the eye and it hurts. Right in front of your ear is the strongest muscle in the human body. It's called the masseter, the one in your cheek. That muscle is the one we used when we were cavemen. We would run after, catch our food, and then eat it. It is a strong muscle. When you we have a, it raw. We wouldn't cook it medium rare. Oh, oh, yeah. They didn't have microwaves in the caves yeah. back then. Yeah. <laughs> but when that muscle gets tight, there is a trigger point that refers pain into the ear. So my look at this is that it may be a muscle problem when the eye hurts and the ear hurts. So whoever called that in, it's probably uh, muscles in your face, your neck, your jaw that get tight and pull on those structures. And the treatment for that is to get the muscles relaxed. And there's a variety of ways to do that. Okay, now that question was from David and Warren. And um, we got a, I've got more here. Uh, Joshua, I'm going to direct this one kind of at you. Sure. Because this is a problem that I uh, discovered. It wasn't a problem, but so it was a phenomenon that I discovered just the other night. And I've been a client of yours for four years. Mm -hmm. Hard to believe. <laughs> Time flies. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I still can't believe that I ever walked around without these. I, I really can't. But anyway, I notice that sometimes, and I take them off at night. That's the only time I take them off. Is, uh, when, when the TV goes off, I take the hearing instruments off and go to bed. Sure. And my hearing is worse some days than it is other days. In other words, I'll take that hearing aid off. Maybe I'm watching box news or, or something, and boy, the sound really goes away. Last night when I took it off, before I went to bed, it hardly made any difference at all. Is my hearing changing back and forth during the day? Does that ever happen? There are sometimes some small, subtle fluctuations, but you're, you're wearing the hearing aids all day long, and your brain is used to having the hearing aids on. In the evening or at bedtime when those devices come out, the brain, which has been used to for 10, 12, 14, 16 hours of one thing, now all of a sudden is being changed. So there is that perception of a noticeable difference in some instances, depending upon the day, depending upon it's been a long day on the radio, uh, Topics of conversation, the um, ears sometimes can get fatigued, sometimes they're a little bit more tired, and so uh, certainly at the end of the evening, there can be a more noticeable difference in the decline. So it's unlikely that the hearing is changing it in and of itself, but yes, there is sometimes that uh, noticeable difference between devices being on and then bedtime with the devices coming out. This is a special edition of Getting Out of the Pain Lane, Dr. Richard Klein, Michigan Head and Neck Institute. We also have with us at uh, Dr. Klein's invitation, uh, Joshua Cruz. I would have invited him if he didn't, but uh, Joshua is uh, with the, of course, with the Cruz family of hearing experts, and Joshua takes care of the uh, Taylor office downriver, and his father, Felix, takes care of the office in Farmington Hills. And one of the things that I, I wanted to get into also, with either one of you, 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 you can jump into this, when... I talk about the um, atmosphere at, you know, you know what, we have a caller standing by, and I didn't notice that, and it's time to take the caller. Let's I'll, do they, it. They always get preference, uh, <laughs> and I will uh, ask my question when I uh, don't have a caller hanging on. Here's Timothy in Hazel Park. Timothy, you're on the radio with um, Joshua Cruz and Dr. Richard Klein. Go ahead. Hello, uh, 
Dr. Klein and Mr. Cruz. My question is, uh, how would you treat uh, TMJ ear pain? I mean, what helps ear pain and caused by TMJ? What would, how, would I, how would you treat that? Well, David, if it is a TMJ problem, and ear pain is one of the many symptoms of it, in fact, most of my referrals come from ears, nose, and throat doctors because of ear pain. The typical procedure is you go to your physician who doesn't understand TMD, and that's relatively common. They don't teach it in medical school or dental school. And you go to your physician and get an antibiotic because you have ear pain. You go back a week or two later, the ear pain has not changed. So they look in it and send you to an ears, nose, and throat specialist who then looks in your ear and says, your ear is fine, I'll bet you have a TMJ problem. Why is that? Right in front of your ear, there is a muscle called the masseter. We talked about it before about uh, being the strongest muscle in the human body. But that muscle, when it gets a charley horse in it or a trigger point, will refer pain above your eye into some of the upper teeth but almost always it will refer pain into the ear. Now, that is not an ear problem. That is a muscle referring pain into the ear. And to answer your question, the treatment is to relax that muscle. How do you do that? Sometimes it's as easy as I'll show them how to knead dough. With your, we're on Facebook, you can see. I'm moving my fingers just like I'm making pierogies. When I'm doing this, but inside the mouth, and squeezing the cheek between my thumb and finger, I'm massaging the entire muscle. If you've ever had a massage, you know that feels good, but you can't get the other half of the trapezius. You can only get the outside of it. So instead of rubbing like this, if you squeeze the cheek between your thumb and finger and rub on it, squeeze it, pull it down, you're relaxing the entire muscle. If that doesn't work, I give a muscle relaxer, or if the real severe ones happen, I'll take some marking, which is a local anesthetic, I'll inject it right here, and that will totally relax the muscle and the ear pain goes away. So that's how you treat it. Okay, Timothy. Thank you very much. All right, thanks for your call. Our telephone number is 800-923-9385. That's 800-923-WDTK. Uh, Joshua, I'd like to ask you, um, we talk, I, I talk a lot about the family atmosphere at Cruz Hearing, and I believe that. And you, all you have to do is go there, and you, you know it's the, the hard closing doesn't happen there. And that's something that you see in a lot of the bigger places. Um, they, they've got a room full of guys waiting to see if the new guy out front can sell you. If he can't, they go get the, the hot shots, bring them out, and they put the real pressure on you. You guys don't do that. And that, I, I, I can't tell you how nice it is. And also what that gives you the opportunity to do, and that is share technology with customers rather than sitting there trying to beat them up and get them to put on a hearing aid and go home. You're there sharing the technologies and the advancements with them. What are some of the advancements that make you the happiest sure. in your industry right now? So technology certainly is enhancing every day in every field, in every industry, our cell phones, our televisions, and it's the same with hearing aids. And John, I'm so pleased to, to hear you say and that you're grateful for the family atmosphere that, that we have because it is, and, and we're so grateful for, for our patients. We're not trying to sell anything. Uh, the folks that come through our door are there for a reason. They're looking for an answer to a problem. We wanna find that answer and it takes time. We invest our time with them to get those answers. And with today's technology and hearing aids, we're able to do a lot better job now than we were 10, 15, 20 years ago with these old bananas that folks used to have to wear on their ears that whistled all the time when they gave grandpa a hug. That's not the case any longer. Today's devices can connect directly to our cell phones, an iPhone or an Android phone. We have apps on our phones now where we can control and manipulate these hearing aids. We can make them louder or make them softer. When we're in that restaurant or at our granddaughter's birthday party, we can reduce and filter out the background noise or focus in on the sound that may be a little bit further away from us. With today's technology, God forbid we happen to misplace or lose a hearing device. Well, we just go to our phone and through GPS, we're able to locate exactly where that hearing device is. So technology, again, there's no perfect hearing aid, but we are just able to do a much better job of finding the right solution for those individuals' needs. 
in uh, dealing with people with hearing aids when they come into your office, Dr. Klein, is there a difference? Is, is there something that you need to do to interface with the people that program that hearing aid? Or you know, how, how does that work when you spot one of those and somebody's come in and they've got an ear problem? Well, the first thing is that when I take radiographs, we put a little device in their ear for the x-ray. So I have to take, I have to have them take the, ear, <laughs> the hearing aids out. Um, I'm dealing with hearing problems of a totally different nature. If they have a hearing problem and the hearing aid is helping them, then that is not in my scope of practice. I'm dealing with hearing that if you massage the muscle, relax the muscle, the hearing comes back. And this reminds me, I, I wish I remembered who this little girl was many years ago. She came into my office. She was eight years old. And this is when I was doing dentistry a long time ago. And she had slowly over a year and a half lost her hearing in one ear. And her ears, nose, and throat doctor at that time when they didn't know anything about TMD back then, they thought it was a joke. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure hearing aids are, went through that same situation decades ago as did most of medicine. Well, I looked in her mouth and I wasn't paying attention to the hearing problem because I didn't know anything about that. I was just a dentist back then and I was happy to be a dentist, proud of being a dentist. But I noticed a little problem. Her previous dentist extracted a small baby tooth and the upper one having nothing to bite against grew down, which is normal, we see that all the time. So I did what any dentist would do, I evened her bite out, balanced it out. And three or four weeks later, she comes in with her mom. Her mom had a big cake. The girl ran up to me, gave me a hug. And the mom says, what did you do? Her hearing came back. And I said, I don't know, but thank you for the cake. <laughs> and I went to the uh, uh, hospital at St. John Hospital to their library. And back then, a textbook was obsolete by the time it's published. Today, it's different. Anything published, you can get it on the internet the same day it's published. But back then it said the ear and the TM joint both grow from a little piece of tissue when you're a fetus and they confuse each other with their symptoms. That's all he knew about it. But that piqued my interest in TMD. And because of that little eight-year-old girl, I'm here with, with Joshua. It's funny how things happen. Uh, hearing problems can be caused by, as you very appropriately said, many different things. And we treat it differently. Uh, if if I m massage the muscle and numb the muscle up and they still had a hearing problem, then that's an ear problem. And that's where you take care of it. I treat the ones who are a muscle problem pulling on the ear. And both things can happen. Our telephone number is 800-923-9385. That's 800-923-WDTK. We're going to take a short break. and we come back, we'll take calls and answer more questions. Questions for Joshua Cruz of Cruz Hearing. And for Dr. Richard Klein of the Michigan Head and Neck Institute. We'll do that and take your calls and talk hearing and seeing and just about everything else uh, that has to do with things above the neck here on Getting Out of the Pain Lane on FM 101.5 and AM 1400, The Patriot. rates may apply. Texting and rolls for recurring text messages. Listen to Nick and Vicki's story about sea quiet. The snoring was very loud and constant. Very draining to be next to somebody who you're trying to sleep and you've got that loud reverberation. You know, I was hoping she'd get to sleep before I'd come up because I, I started getting to the point where I was concerned because I knew she wasn't going to get much rest if I came to bed at the same time. You know, she'd been so used to me buying all the other stuff I tried. She was kind of skeptical. Say, oh, okay, well, there's another gimmick uh, are you, you going to even try it? And I said, no, I really read up on this, and I'm, I'm going to make an effort with this. I'm going to try it. And it stopped my snoring, so it's worked great for us. I'm a happier person in the morning and more energetic, and I think that carries through the day. Yeah, that's the best way to describe what Z-Quiet's done for us. Z-Quiet works for both men and women. Text SLEEP to 246810 or go to GetZQuiet.com. Try it risk-free for 30 days for just $9.95. Text SLEEP to 246810 or go to GetZQuiet.com today. Healthy woman goes into a clinic, comes out dead, and there's no police report. The movie Gosnell, the trial of America's biggest serial killer, focuses on the story of Dr. Kermit Gosnell, an inner-city Philadelphia abortionist. 
but it tells this man's gruesome tale without actually showing the gruesome deeds themselves. Instead, it helps us understand this man's horrible and deadly choices through his courtroom trial. We watch as gutsy Philadelphia prosecutor Alexis McGuire and a pair of dedicated detectives gather the evidence to make their case that Gosnell has murdered hundreds, maybe even thousands of babies over the course of his career, an atrocity that many knew of but purposefully chose to ignore. You'll be the prosecutor who went after reproductive rights, and you'll be a racist to boot. You've got a lot of folk who'd like to see abortion outlawed, and this is not going to be the case that gives them an excuse. This is a hard story to comprehend due to Gosnell's callousness and even his narcissism. It's the kind of story that stays with you because you'd swear it was all fiction, except that it isn't. Anyone considering this film needs to know that its graphic verbal depictions of how an abortion happens spare little. As difficult as the subject matter is, however, this is an important movie. It's a film that no doubt will change the way some viewers understand the tragedy of abortion, a movie that could help someone make the right choice for an innocent life. I'll give Gosnell a three out of five for family friendliness. For the full review, be sure to visit us at PluggedIn.com slash radio. Plugging you into the movies, I'm Bob Olaszewski for Focus on the Family's Plugged In Movie Review. This is Getting Out of the Pain Lane with Dr. Richard Klein. Special guest this evening, Joshua Cruz of Cruz Hearing. Uh, he's down in the uh, Downriver office, in case any of you are interested. We'll give out the contact information and put that on our Facebook page also for both locations of uh, Cruz and for the location of uh, Michigan Head Neck. And we will do that um, before the show is over. Um, if somebody suspects that they might have a hearing problem, but they're not real sure, they don't want to bother anybody, they don't want to come in, Joshua, to Cruise Hearing and have you spend a lot of time with them and find out there's nothing wrong, so they don't do anything. And I know there's a lot of people like that. Um, explain what you you do with folks. Absolutely. And when the first stages of some hearing deficiencies do occur, a lot of times folks don't want to do anything. And in a lot of cases, hearing loss doesn't happen overnight. You don't go to bed on Tuesday evening and wake up Wednesday morning with a great decline. And if you did, you'd be at the doctor's office or in the ER so fast trying to find an answer. With most types of hearing loss, with most types of hearing deficiency, it is a gradual process. It's a long-term process. And eventually it gets to the point where family members, spouses, children, grandchildren eventually say, you know what, dear, enough's enough. We've got to do something about it. Psychologically, those individuals do have to kind of overcome and realize, you know what, maybe I'm not hearing as well as I used to. And the aging process is one of those things. Things don't work as well as they used to when we get older, and the years certainly fall into that category. So what we always recommend is what we call our free hearing assessment in our clinic. It's about a 90-minute assessment to truly determine what is going on in the ear. And as Dr. Klein knows, you know, there are so many different types or causes of some hearing loss or hearing deficiency. So we need to determine what that cause, what those issues are. So we'll run through our gamut of tests. We'll run through all of our uh, basic information to figure out, is it just something as simple as some earwax in the ear canal? We use our video camera to go down and scope into the ear to see, do we have a clear pathway in the ear canal? Can we see the ear drum? Are there any issues with congestion? Are there problems with allergies? This These great Michigan springs, winters, fall, well, I guess winters aren't too bad, but allergies, sinuses can all have that adverse effect on the hearing. So we'll do all of our assessments, we'll do all of our testing. We do that free in our clinic, again, to determine exactly what's going on. And once we know those answers, then we'll figure out what that right solution is. And if it does happen to be hearing devices, we'll go into that next step. Which is? That next step is what we call the Cruise 10-Day Test Drive. 
And what this is is something unique to our clinic where we found the right solution. At least we think we found the right solution. And our clinic is not the real world. Our clinic is not your kitchen or your office. So we take the devices and we put them on our patient's ears and they're able to wear the devices home for 10 days with no charge. There's no commitment. There's no obligation. There's no deposit required to ensure that we have found the right solution. And as we say in our clinic, there is no perfect hearing aid. We want to try and maximize and make these devices perform as well as possible, but we will not know how well they can work until, again, they're in their everyday situation. So we encourage an evening out at that nice restaurant. We encourage visiting friends and family, going out into the park or visiting a softball or a football game here in the fall time. That way we know for sure that, yes, these devices that we believe that we've recommended are appropriate certainly are the right solution. I know that when uh, I attended my brother's wedding uh, last year, late last year, uh, <clears throat> it was a huge wedding, huge reception, and I decided to try out my directional feature and uh, on my uh, hearing instruments. Got on my remote control, pushed the right button, and suddenly I was hearing people at my table much better than I did before. And all the other noise around me was blocked out. Explain that. So that's what we're able to do now with today's technology. Is we cannot eliminate what we call background noise. We can't make it go away completely. But what we can do is we can filter it out much better than we've ever been able to do before. And that wedding reception is the perfect example. We've got some nice music playing, and depending upon the reception, sometimes not so nice music. We've got these family members. So there's laughing, there's crying, there's hugging, but all this noise, we're able to now filter out that stuff and only pull in and only focus on what we're trying to hear. So when we want to see Aunt Lucy across the table and hear what she's talking about, the technology in these hearing aids does block out all the other stuff and pull in Aunt Lucy's voice so we can pick up and understand exactly what she is saying. And this is with practically zero training on the part of the user. Absolutely. It is very simplistic. It's extremely transparent. We want to try and make these devices as simple to use as possible. And with most of these uh, recent innovations, a lot of it is automatic, so there's no, nothing that the user needs to do at all. And in some cases, the hearing aids aren't always mind readers, so sometimes we do have to input a little press of a button here or there, but again, extremely simplistic, very easy to use, and it gets the results that we're looking for. Dr. Klein, we got a, uh, an email this week, uh, a question, uh, and I'm surprised we haven't gotten this one before, uh, but we haven't. Uh, it came in from St. Clair Shores from Anna uh, asking, why am I dizzy when my hearing is muffled? Never heard that question. Well, that's an easy one for me. <clears throat> muffled hearing, and we can both talk about that one, of course, uh, can be caused by a muscle. Everything that I'm talking about is muscles doing something wrong. You have an eardrum. The purpose of that eardrum is so you can hear. The purpose of the tensor tympani, which is the name of the muscle that attaches to the eardrum, the purpose of that muscle is to pull on it to protect it from loud noises. And it protects it when you're at a concert. It protects it if you're working a jackhammer. That's your job, which is why they have to wear earring uh, you know, plugs in their ear. When it pulls on the ear, you get muffled hearing. At the same time, in your ear is something called the eustachian tube. It's like a little carpenter's level. There's a muscle that attaches to that, a bigger name, the tensor vili palatini. You don't have to remember any of that stuff, but it's a small muscle. Sounds like something I'd order on Friday night. <laughs> yeah. I do have some Italian friends uh, that say, named after us. <laughs> no, it attaches to your palate. That's where the palatini part. But that muscle attaches to that little carpenter's level. And when that muscle gets tight, it pulls on it. So when it's pulling on the eardrum, you could have muffled hearing. When a different muscle is pulling on the eustachian tube at the same time, you could get dizzy. So those are two TMD symptoms. And TMD is a disorder of the TM joint. Uh, and I see that a lot with patients. 
one thing that uh, that uh, Joshua just said, I think differentiates the two things we're doing here. He mentioned that hearing loss is a slow, insidious situation. So when I have a patient who has a TMJ problem and they have loss of hearing or muffled hearing, I say, when did your headache start? And they say, about a year ago. When did your hearing become a problem? About a year ago. Well, that makes sense. Because the hearing loss that I treat is something that happens when the muscle gets tight, and that can happen quickly. So some of these people have had loss of hearing for two or three months just, and they've been in pain for two or three months just. Those are easy for me to treat. That's not what you treat because it's a slow, insidious process. And uh, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. My father had uh, hearing problems, and when he didn't want to hear uh, his wife, he would turn the hearing aid off. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure you've heard before. <laughs> but I've never done it. Well, Cindy's listening. I'm afraid yes. she is. Yes, so, so. <laughs> Got to be careful. Um, I, I just uh, got so many questions. I don't know where to start. I've never had you two guys in the same room before. It's fascinating. This is fun, isn't it? It is. Um, tinnitus is something that uh, you might get asked about. Mm -hmm. You might get asked about. I might ask about it. Um what is it, and is there really something that can be done about it? Sometimes. <laughs> not, not all the time, because there's so many causes of that. There's so many causes of everything we're talking about, but ringing in the ear, tinnitus. I have a slide that say uh, tinnitus or tinnitus. It's like potato, potato, you know. Uh, but I have a slide saying it's very irritating. I have the word spelled ear, E-A-R, on it, because it makes you understand. But what happens is in my field, tinnitus is caused by a muscle pulling on the small bone. In, the smallest bone in the human body is called the malleus. I'm giving some basic anatomy that you know really well. There's a ligament that attaches to the malleus, and it attaches inside the ear to that little brake pad called the meniscus, uh, the one that some people have a little popping and clicking like that. That's caused by the eardrum, uh, or rather the meniscus moving in the TM joint. And the other half of that goes through a little tunnel into the ear and attaches to that little bone. And when it pulls on it, you can get ringing in the ear. That's one of the many reasons. Occasionally, and by coincidence today, I had a really nice uh, lady come in. She really takes care of herself. She looked like she was about 30 when she was 50. She really takes care of herself, eats well, exercises, never takes drugs. She's had tinnitus for about a year, and she's gone to um, the Mayo Clinic. She's gone to the Cleveland Clinic. She's gone everywhere, and so she came to me as a last resort, and I went in, and I didn't see any problems of TMD. And I'm sorry to have to tell her I can't help you because if she had pain in the muscles, then maybe I could do something, but she had no pain in the muscles, and she obviously was very healthy, but the tinnitus is driving her crazy. And tinnitus, Dr. Klein, just to kind of piggyback on that, you're mm -hmm. right, there are so many different causes, so many different uh, factors that can come into play. And currently in the medical field, uh, we don't fully understand tinnitus in some of the other factors. A lot of times what I see is tinnitus is accompanied by hearing loss. And our brain is what allows us to hear. The ears are just the vessels that allow that information to be sent to the brain. And what we believe is happening is that when a hearing deficiency occurs, the brain is not receiving all of the proper information. And to fill in those voids, this noise, this ring, this buzz, it can be described sometimes as a buzzing, a hissing, or a chirping, all different types of uh, ways to describe it can come about. And currently in those instances, there is no cure. There's no magic pill. There's no medication. There's no surgery or therapy to reduce or to stop that. And we're able to manage it to a degree with some of the devices or some of the therapies that we have in our clinic. We have about a 35 to 40% success rate in those instances. We certainly would love it to be higher, but this tinnitus, this tinnitus can be sometimes debilitating, create the anxiety and depression, sleep deprivation. Uh, so our methods are, is, again, it's not a quick fix. Sometimes it's weeks, sometimes it's months, sometimes it's literally years, but allowing the brain to relearn how to cope and how to deal with this perception, with this noise. 
and again, eventually finding the right solution for those folks that are uh, having those struggles. And it is very annoying. I had it for a while after my accident in 1994, and mine would come and go, come and go. But when I had it, it interrupted my sleep. It, just, it was one of the many problems I had that were driving me crazy for a while. But mine just went away when all the muscles relaxed. So, uh, and as Joshua said, there are so many other reasons for it, and some of them, unfortunately, are not curable. We're talking with Dr. Richard Klein and with Felix Cruz, or Joshua Cruz. I do that all the time, so <laughs> don't. You're uh, not the only one. I bet I'm not. <laughs> well, Felix, I know you're not here because you're at a convention, so I think the convention is over. If you're listening, your son's doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's probably aware of that. The point is that I, that I wanted to make here on uh, Getting Out of the Pain Lane, which has been uh, renamed for this edition, um, the uh, right gear for the year. Um, we're talking with Felix or with Joshua Cruz and with Dr. Richard Klein. And any questions that you might have, we still have a couple of minutes to get them in. And if you'd like to, it's 800-923-9385, our regular on-air number can get you into uh, these two gentlemen who are happy to answer your questions, 800-923-9385. We're going to take our last short break, and when we come back, I'm going to ask the question about a subject that's really on everybody's mind, Alzheimer's disease, and there is a connection that has been discovered, in fact, a couple of connections that have been discovered with hearing loss and other things to do with the ear uh, that uh, bear looking at. So we'll be talking with the gentleman about that and taking your calls at 800-923-9385 as we continue here on FM 101.5 and AM 1400, The Patriot. If you're in a construction zone, you know there may be some nails exposed or some wires that are not put together and so it allows you to just step back, look at things, and depersonalize them. This is Focus on the Family Minute, and Jerusha Clark suggests thinking of a construction zone when it comes to your teen. For instance, when your teenager says, just leave me alone, think, okay, I got to put my hard hat on here rather than retaliate. We can't control our teens. I know we all want to, and especially ladies, I'll just say it to you because I'm a recovering control freak as a woman. <laughs> We cannot control anyone but ourselves. And so as we, under the power of the Holy Spirit, are transformed, our teens are then able to see in us that change, and they are given the chance to change as well. You can model the change you want to see in your child. More from Jerusha at FamilyMinute.org. I'm Jim Chesko with Your Money Now. Shares of Texas Instruments are down about 6% in after-hours trading. This, after the semiconductor company, missed estimates for its third quarter revenue and gave weak fourth quarter guidance. Kroger has been holding job fairs at several of its stores around the country this month, and the supermarket chain confirms that it's looking to hire more than 10,000 associates for the holiday season. Kroger says seasonal career opportunities include customer service, e-commerce, merchandising, and pharmacy help. Anyone interested is encouraged to apply via at jobs.kroger.com. Wall Street recovered much of its early sharp declines, a retreat that had the Dow Industrials down nearly 550 points, but still ended the day in the red. Tepid outlooks from industrial giants 3M and Caterpillar didn't help. An analyst at Bank of America Merrill Lynch says investors seem to have a glass half empty perspective on the current earnings season. The Dow Jones Industrials dropped 126 points on the day, the S&P 500 lost 15, and the Nasdaq fell 31. That's your money now. The clock is ticking. Every day you put off buying life insurance can cost you big time. The older you get, the more you'll have to pay. And a sudden accident or unexpected illness could cause your rates to skyrocket or even make you uninsurable. Beat the clock. Call Select Quote now. No hassle, no obligation. In minutes, you'll have a choice of your best rates from up to 10 highly rated life insurance companies. Richard, 40 years old, takes meds to control his cholesterol. Still, SelectQuote got him a 10-year, $500,000 policy for under $25 a month. Under a dollar a day. Don't risk your family security another minute. Get your free quote now. Just call 800-569-2121. That's 800-569-2121. 800-569-2121. Or go to SelectQuote.com. Since 1985, 
We shop, you save. Get full details on the example policy at selectquote.com slash commercials. Their price could vary depending on your health, issuing company, and other factors. Not available in all states. This is a special edition of Getting Out of the Pain Lane, our regular monthly program with Dr. Richard Klein at the Michigan Head and Neck Institute. We've changed the name to The Right Gear for Your Ear, and our special guest tonight is Joshua Cruz of Cruz Hearing. Joshua is in charge of the uh, Downriver um, call it Office of uh, Cruise Hearing, and that's uh, down in um, Taylor. Real easy to find, and we'll have the directions uh, and the number and the uh, address for you at our Facebook page immediately following this program. Before we took the break, guys, I mentioned the recent studies that are coming out now showing connections, lots of connections between Alzheimer's and the ear, the brain. Of course, we knew the brain. But many of the other areas in the, you know, the the general area of the head that need to be watched can give us early signs. Talk to us about that, and either one of you can, uh, or you can do it together. There have been a lot of recent studies, primarily with Johns Hopkins University, that have shown where untreated hearing loss, so where there's a hearing deficiency with nothing being done about it, where individuals are nearly twice as likely to have some type of cognitive disorder as a result of the brain not receiving the proper information, not receiving the proper sound that it should. And when we talk about these cognitive disorders, the dementia, the Alzheimer's, all these nasty, yucky things that we don't like to hear about, we really want to be able to, again, provide that proper stimulation to the brain, give the brain what it needs, Again, in, in what I see in most instance, instances with the hearing deficiency is that it is that gradual process. We need to be able to re-stimulate the brain, again, give the ears the proper sound that they've been missing, and uh, again, c- can control or manage those cognitive disorders much better than uh, continuing on with, again, this untreated hearing loss. And in my field, loss of hearing being one of the TMD symptoms. It depends on what kind of Alzheimer's you have. Some people, when they get dementia, get really nasty. And some people just get laid back and forgetful. The ones who get really angry and nasty and and they're almost acting like they're in PMS, which unfortunately does happen to some of them, what they do is when they're mad, and if they're mad pretty much all day long, they're tensing up their jaws, their neck, their face. And then you can have hearing loss or more importantly, sometimes, or just as important, when you're that mad and you're irritated, you can't sleep. And if you're not getting enough REM sleep, then you get irritated even more. It's a vicious cycle. So the people that have uh, dementia and Alzheimer's that just get laid back, they probably don't have a lot of the things that I treat. The ones who are angry all the time have a lot of the things that I treat. And I'm sure you've probably seen pretty much the same thing. Because some people, the the brain gets to be forgetful, but it's not mad at anything. It's not irritated. It just can't remember. My dad was like that. He was this peaceful, nicest old man. We had the same conversations over and over and over and over again. And I miss those conversations now. But he wasn't mad at all. Let's do uh, what we should have done maybe at the beginning of the program. And uh, Joshua, let's do start with you. Give us a little synopsis of Cruise here and the history of it and what you guys are doing now. Absolutely. And again, thank you, John, for everything this evening. Thank you, Dr. Klein. Uh, Cruise Hearing, a small family practice that my father founded 25 years ago in the little Lathrop Village, Michigan here. Uh, Currently now two locations in Taylor and Farmington Hills. Uh, Three decades almost, again, helping people to hear better. It's our passion. It's what we love. We know that it makes such a profound difference because hearing loss can be debilitating. It can create isolation, frustration, aggravation, depression. And we know that in helping the ears and restoring the ears to the proper level of hearing allows us to re-engage and to reconnect with those that we love the most and with the world around us. So uh, again, 
it's our passion and it's what we love to do. What do you guys have against the term hearing loss? The biggest thing is, again, where hearing loss is, seems like there you just can't hear the sound. And, and that's not the case with the, the majority of the patients that we see. It's that inability to process or to understand what's being said. We'll talk about that eight-year-old granddaughter. Again, this, just the smile and the nod where we know she's saying something, but we just can't get it the end of the day, it really comes down to understanding the words, getting the clarity and the sharpness. It's just not hearing loss. It's just not missing the sound. It's really missing the words. And we want to bring back and restore that clarity. When um, you, why don't you go ahead and give a, a synopsis of uh, Michigan Head and Neck? There's some similarities here. Uh, I was in a car accident in 1994. I was doing some TMJ work for about 10 years before that, and I really didn't know as much as I know now because they don't teach it at dental schools. And that's not my opinion. Dr. Clifton Simmons called every single dental school in the United States, and he's the president of the Tennessee Dental Association, and he wrote an article. Why don't they teach TMJ problems in dental school? They don't. So basically... I was in that accident 24 years ago. Your place started 25 years ago. There's some similarity there, too. And another thing that you mentioned, John, is he has a family there. Well, I'm the only doctor there, but I have a family. My staff has been with me for 20, 24 years. Most of them have been a long time. And I look at my staff, and um, I think they're my daughters, my sisters, my mothers, my wife. And that's why I look at them. They, they treat me that way. They take care of me just like any one of those would. Do they ever? Oh, yes, they Somebody do. Somebody comes yeah. in there and tries yeah. to uh, disrupt your schedule? Well, they, they know what to do. Not going to happen. And I respect them ultimately. And I, and I look at them as my family. And I think we treat each other that way, too. And this is exactly what you said. You're working really with your blood family. I'm working with my extended family. And it's, there's a lot of similarities to two and a half decades, two and a half decades. Mm -hmm. Do you, either one of you, uh, we're down to about two minutes left. Um, either one of you do special appointments where you go out and visit people or you know, try to get to people who have a difficulty getting to you? I, I do a lot. And, and mostly it's to, to educate and help uh, physicians. I, I teach at St. John Hospital and Henry Ford Hospital. I uh, just came back from a, doing a two-day lecture to uh, dentists and physicians in Scottsdale uh, last week. Um, I will be lecturing uh, different places, uh, Paris, France, next, uh, next March. So I like to spread the word, not just around here, not just to have patients, but to spread the word that this situation, TMD, it's, it's there and it's controllable and it could be fixed. And it's a, it's a joy that I have. I thank God for the accident I was in. I really do thank God for that accident. I enjoy my life fully now, where I enjoyed it a lot before. Take a couple years out where I didn't feel good. And uh, I just, I enjoy it. So I, I like to lecture a lot. It's, it's, it's a joy for me. And, uh, but before we wrap this up, Randy, if you're listening, I hear you. And you made my friend John yell the other day because you're on the other side and we both have two sides, but leave the guy alone because you always say, where's the, where's the proof? Where's the proof? Where's the proof? And tonight we're talking about things. Everything we talked about is peer reviewed, Randy. It is the truth. It's, it's educated by universities. We're not talking about BS. We're not talking about fake news. And we did exactly what you wanted, Randy. We told the truth today. Closing remarks. Again, thank you, John, for having us. Thank you, Dr. Klein, for, for having us as well. Uh, just to piggyback on Dr. Klein, yeah, we, we, we go everywhere. We have clinic hours from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, but we see our folks 6 a.m. in the morning, midnight, and we'll make our home visits to anywhere and uh, and anywhere and everywhere. We'll, we'll take care of our patients. Great. Folks, um, guys, can we do this again? That'd be fun. You I, I know it's unfair yeah. to ask you in front of all these people, but I hope we can. It was very enjoyable. Thank you for listening, and stay tuned on WDTK Radio, and you'll hear the entire program repeated. Thanks again for listening. Have a great night. Thank you for joining us for Getting Out of the Pain Lane with Dr. Richard Klein, sponsored by the Michigan Head and Neck Institute in Warren.
The Michigan Head and Neck Institute exclusively treats TMJ and obstructive sleep apnea for thousands of patients every year. To learn more, visit their website at tmjmichigan.com. That's tmjmichigan.com. Or call 586-573-0438. 586-573-0438. The opinions expressed on this show are representative of the Michigan Head and Neck Institute and not those of WDTK, The Patriot, or Salem Communications, and are for informational purposes only. While there may be commonalities among multiple TMD and sleep apnea cases, each patient is unique. Information given during this show should be used to educate the listener about what they should discuss with their doctor if they are suffering from the mentioned symptoms. The information is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Seek the advice of your physician or call Michigan Head and Neck Institute with any questions you may have regarding TMD or sleep apnea or any medical concerns. The Constitution says provide for the national defense and promote the public welfare, not provide for public welfare and promote national defense. Hi, I'm Wesley Berry. Bernie and his socialists are at it again, and we'll have a lively back and forth on socialism, immigration, and other breaking news. We can disagree, but we don't have to be disagreeable. Join me, Wesley Berry, for The People's Voice this Sunday at noon here on FM 101.5 AM 1400, The Patriot. Larry Elder. Former AG Loretta Lynch said voter ID law.